How's it going, YouTube? We are back. This time I want to discuss the fight this uh, past weekend, Wilder and Fury 3. Great fight. Absolutely everything that we could have asked for in a heavyweight championship fight. Probably one of, going to be candidate for fight of the year. Nobody could ask for anything more than what we got. Five knockdowns total, uh, two from Wilder and three from Fury. Great, absolutely great fight. I, I can't say anything else. I was at Horror Nights, unfortunately, so I couldn't watch it in the comfort of my own house. So my one of my friends was streaming it on their phone, and we made do with what we had. But great fight, like I said, all the way around. And I wanted to talk about what happens from, from here on. Like, does Wilder retire? Where does Fury go well, since Joshua lost? Like, what's the plan? What like, What is everybody doing? Or what I think they should do. Personally, I, I want to talk some more about the actual fight itself. I thought that Wilder came in with a good game plan. I, I like the way he, he started the fight. Boxing. He was jabbing. He was throwing, one, he was throwing rights and lefts into the body. Using, his, using some reach and depositing equity into the body right there. I thought that was a great idea. Slow down the bigger, heavier Fury. And uh, try to get him to move less. Because... Fury's defense is pretty good for a guy that size. He moves like he's a middleweight for someone who's 270 pounds. So really impressed by that strategy. It was just not enough. I think by the fourth round, it looked like Wilder was already like kind of gassed. I, I don't know. Maybe it was the extra bulk that he put on. I know he came in at his career heaviest, like 230-something pounds, something like that. I don't know if that was the reason why he's so slow toward like the fourth or fifth round. He was, he was gone. I, I don't know what happened to him. I don't know if the... The camp was not as good as it, he said it was. I don't know what the deal was there. But he knocked down Fury in, in the third round, I believe. Or in the fourth round, twice. Twice. So after the fourth round is when he started to lose his legs a little bit. After getting knocked down in the third round, Fury deposited a nice shot to the head. Knocked Fury, or Wilder down in the third round. Fury gets knocked down twice in the fourth round. It was, you know, the fight was going back and forth. And I think once the fifth round started, it, it just seemed like... Fury was starting to like build momentum and just take over. He was starting to walk down Wilder. He was just landing such good shots to the head. There were some weird looking knockdowns too. Ones where you could say maybe that shouldn't have been in my opinion. But we did get an emphatic knockout in the 11th round. Uh, Deontay Wilder caught a nasty right hand. By that point, I already thought that he was gone. Like He was long gone. If this was the Wilder's last trainer, he would have stopped the fight. It looked like he was so tired to the point that he couldn't even defend himself. And that's that's obviously your job as, as a trainer and as even as a referee is to, to prevent the man from um, hurting himself, which he might have done. I mean, he took a big right hand to the face, right to the chin, right on the button, knocked him out cold for a little bit, waved the fight out as soon as he landed. But Wilder fought on his shield, which is what he wanted to do. That's what his new trainer allowed him to do. He didn't want to go out on any other terms than that, but... Personally, I, I don't know. I, those are the kind of things in boxing, boxing that is scary because obviously every fighter wants to fight on their shield. They want to stay in there to the very end. They want to, until they knock them out or whatever. But you got to protect these guys from themselves. And that looked like a situation that could have gotten bad really fast. But credit to Fury for knocking him out, for boxing, beating him twice already. You know, he's the number one heavyweight in the world right now. Even though Alexander Yusik has all the, all the heavyweight belts except for the WBC. I think that... It's the fight between those two, Usyk and Fury, would be absolutely insane, especially for Europe and the UK. I don't know how well that fight would do over here. I know the US loves Tyson Fury, but I think the the addition of Deontay Wilder was really bringing a, a pretty pretty big crowd. So I, I imagine that if they do do Fury and Usyk, it's going to be in the UK, like they did Joshua and Usyk, but. That's what, that's what, at least that's what I would think. They do it in Wembley. They sell out another 70,000 seats, which I think they would easily be able to do for a heavyweight undisputed champion. But like I said, that's if Usyk does beat Joshua in the rematch, because that is going to happen. Joshua has enacted his rematch clause, so they will see. we will see that fight first prior. But what does Fury do in the meantime? Does Fury just sit and wait for the winner of that fight? Or does, you know, does Dylan White push for a mandatory fight? Does he fight someone else? You know what I mean? There's a lot to go on with Fury here. And I I imagine that he just waits for for Usyk or, or Joshua to come out of that fight victorious. I don't know if the WCC is going to be... Uh, in, what is the word I'm looking for here? Is going to be um, adamant about 
Fury fighting Dylan White. I don't know. I don't know what the what the deal is going to be there. But the main question is, we we already kind of know where Fury's going. What happens to Wilder now? Does Wilder retire? I don't think he should. I mean, you know, he did burn out, but I feel like you knocked out the he or you knocked down the heavyweight champion twice in one round. For the first time of his career, he got knocked out twice in one round. So there's still gas in the tank there. I still think that he could, you know, there's still fights for him to be won or to be fought at least. Maybe not one of the fought. Maybe try to get another title shot. Maybe he goes for Fury 4. Maybe he goes for the other champions, whatever the deal is. But I still think that there is fights to be made for him. He's a big money name, especially in the heavyweight market with all the knockouts that he has in his career. I believe he's 43-2-1 now with 42 knockouts, which is absolutely insane. I would see him fighting maybe a Frank Sanchez or possibly Andy Ruiz, something like that. You know, one of those heavyweights that are kind of like in, in between right now. Maybe he fights Dylan White. Who knows? You know, I see him fighting one of those guys that's kind of like on the cusp of a, of a championship bid, something like that for, for Wilder next. I don't think, I still think there's gas in the tank for him. I don't think he calls it a career. Even if he does call it a career, it is a, a great legendary career. 41 knockouts and 42 wins is pretty insane as it is, but that's going to do it for this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe, comment what you guys thought about, thought about the fight. I thought it was a pretty good fight. I was satisfied with it. Uh, if you guys would like to make a donation to the channel, so hit me in your cash app, and I'll see you guys next time.